Hello everyone, my name is Ian, you're watching Big Rock Moto, and thank you so much for tuning in on this beautiful March morning. BMW's F850 GS and this F850 GS Adventure you see here came out in 2019, offering a more affordable, slightly lighter weight alternative to BMW's venerable Boxer Twin 1200 and 1250 GSs. This bike replaced BMW's F800 GS, having come out in 2009, way, way ahead of its time, and having served adventure riders all around the world with great performance and great reliability. The question is, and it's a big one, does the F850 GS still stack up in the face of its lighter, more modern, and frankly, faster competition in terms of bikes like the KTM 890 Adventure, the Husqvarna Norden 901, Triumph's Tiger 900 Rally Pro, Honda's updated 1100cc Africa Twin, and other bikes like that. Do some of the premium features like the electronic suspension and the quality and fit and finish and long warranty BMW is known for, do those things make up for this bike's very obvious disadvantage in terms of overall power and disadvantage in terms of its weight? So to find out, we're gonna take a deep dive into this bike and here's how I'm gonna break down this review. First, we're gonna talk about the specs, the models, and the pricing. Then we're gonna get on the road. I'm first gonna give you a tour around the bike. Then we're gonna go for some extensive riding off-road and on the highway and talk about how this bike performs and how it's like to ride. Then we're gonna come back here and talk about how it compares to the competition. We'll talk about what I love and what I hate about it. And then we'll have some final thoughts. So grab your favorite beverage and some popcorn because this review is gonna be a good one. I hope you'll stay tuned. Let's go for a ride. Both F850 GSs, the Standard and Adventure, use the same 853cc engine. It makes 90 horsepower and 63 pound-feet of torque. They also both use the same six-speed transmission with optional quick shifter. They also both have 21-inch front wheel and 17-inch rear wheels, but that's about where the similarities end. The standard F850 GS is a much trimmed down version as compared to this adventure. That bike starts at $13,240 US base price. The standard F850 GS has a much smaller four gallon fuel tank, a much smaller windshield and fairing. It also has quite a bit shorter suspension travel with only eight inches of front travel and 8.6 inches of rear travel. Stepping up to this model here, the F850 GS Adventure adds quite a lot of equipment. You get a much larger fuel tank at 6.1 gallons. You get this much larger fairing and windshield setup. You get a longer travel front fork. The Adventure model has a 9.1 inch travel front fork for more absorption of off-road terrain, but it still uses the same 8.6 inches of rear travel. You also get larger enduro footrests. You get uh, an adjustable brake lever. You get these standard engine crash bars, which actually work very, very well. And you also get standard hand guards. Now, typical to BMW, not only with their motorcycles, but with their cars, everything else beyond those few standard features becomes optional equipment. So when they advertise a base price, you have to keep in mind that a lot of the things you think would be standard are simply not standard. So if you want things like BMW's ESA or electronically adjustable suspension, if you want heated grips, if you want a center stand, if you want driving lights, if you want the extended riding modes, if you want keyless ride, all those things you have to pay extra for. And on this 850GS Adventure, unlike the 1250GS Adventure, you don't even get these rear luggage carriers as standard, which is quite interesting. Now, a lot of F850 GSAs you see at the dealerships are gonna be equipped with either the select or the premium packages. Now, those packages bundle a lot of that equipment together for one price, and you're gonna see a lot of bikes equipped that way. 
a fully loaded F-850 GSA with all the options but without luggage, it's going to come in around 17,500 US, which is going to put it in line with something like the Honda Africa Twin Adventure Sports or the Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro. So seat heights on this bike range anywhere between 32 all the way up to 35 inches, depending on whether you get the low suspension option and what seats you get. BMW offers quite a bit of different seats from low seats to high seats to rally seats, comfort seats, and you name it. In general, this bike is maybe about an inch lower if you compare you know, the suspension configuration and the seat compared to the 1250GS, but it's not that huge of a difference. Let's talk about maintenance really quick. So BMW specifies a 6,000 mile oil change interval. Oil changes on BMW motorcycles, including this one, are fairly simple. They use a spin-on automotive type filter and you've got one drain plug and it's very easy to do. Valve adjustments come every 12,000 miles and can be quite expensive because BMW service centers tend to charge quite a lot for their service. Air filter is located under this top gas tank cover and it takes five or 10 minutes to get to that. Now, since there's a lot of controversy over the weight of this bike, let's cover that now. The standard F-850 GS comes in at 504 pounds or 228 kilograms. However, the F-850 GS Adventure you see here comes at a whopping 538 pounds or 244 kilograms. It's true that these weights put this bike at the very, very top end of the midsize adventure bike category, and quite frankly, in terms of weight, actually put this bike more in competition with the full-size adventure bikes. So this is a topic we're gonna cover later on in this video when I talk about some of the competition, but it's good to get this guy out of the way right now. All right, let's take a tour of this beast and then get it out on the road. So. Starting here at the back, you can see it's got an LED tail light, LED turn signals, which are standard. Pretty big exhaust silencer. This is a Euro 5 compliant bike. You can see my press bike is running the optional uh, off-road tires and BMW uses the Continental TKC 80s, which have always been a great tire. Moving around here, you can see these fold down passenger foot pegs. Being the adventure model, this has the larger enduro footrest compared to the standard F850 GS. You've got a, a nice center stand here that's also an optional extra. These side case carriers in this upper rack are also an optional extra. Unlike the big GS, they're not standard when you go to the adventure model, so you actually have to spec these extra. And I think they're the exact same carriers as the 1250 GS, but I could be wrong on that. If you look at the brake lever, it's got the same thing as its bigger brother bike, which is uh, this part folds down here, so for off-road this is nice because it brings your lever further up. But I prefer to run it in a normal position like this most of the time. You can see the side engine cases here, the rear shock mechanism. This does have electronic suspension adjustments, so there's more going on in the rear shock. Uh, the rear brake reservoir there. You can see part of the frame here, these large plastic side fairings. You've got a coolant tank under here. Moving around this way, you can see the engine protector bars, which are very, very sturdy and are nicely spaced out here. So if you do have a drop, they're well designed to protect all this and uh, very good job, I think, with BMW designing those. So that's nice that you don't have to go to the aftermarket to do that. You can see the twin exhaust coming out here. Moving around to the front of the bike, you can see the large adjustable windshield. It has these side winglets here. It's got standard handguards on the adventure model. LED turn signals, uh, you've got the front beak, lower front fender, nine inches of travel on the front fork, a large curved radiator. You can see the suspension here. The Brembo brakes, which I'll put it in the text. I don't know if it's two or four piston, but they seem a little uh, weak to me. These really nice looking on this bike, these gold uh, tubed, but tubeless, I'm sorry, spoked tubeless wheels in this gold color is really nice. And of course the TKC80 front tire. Let's jump up on this bad boy and kind of show you the cockpit and the controls here. So in terms of the seat height, uh, the standard seat height is I think around 34 inches and I can flat foot both feet. I'm five foot 10 or five foot 11 inches tall on a good day. You can see this bike does have the optional BMW nav. It's a nav five. That's a subject for another video maybe. You can see here the standard BMW mirrors, usual BMW grips. Starting here on the right, you can see you do have adjustable levers for uh, both the brake and the clutch lever. The riding mode switch, heated grip switch here, dedicated button, 
start stop switch you've got a usb outlet right here adjustable windshield up and down i really prefer this mechanism actually to the mechanism on the 1250 gs this is a lot easier to use and seems less wobbly to me you've got a power outlet outlet here another power outlet you've got these side wing deflectors which i showed you a second ago moving over here cruise control Hazard lights, thank you for including hazard lights. My Norton doesn't even have that. Suspension adjustments here. Uh, this button will turn on and off your traction control and ABS and things like that. Uh, menu up and down, I'll show you the menu here in a second. Turn signal button here, horn button, and you've got the BMW Wonder Wheel controller, which is really, really nice. Let's fire the bike up, or at least turn on the dashboard to show you here how this dashboard looks. It's the same TFT you see on many of the BMWs. Got a startup screen, uh, and then if you go into the menu, uh, you've got, let's see, vehicle. It says nav detected, so you can use the wheel to control the nav, so it's integrated, which is nice. You can see different readouts on the bike, uh, onboard computer, you've got a couple of trip computers here, tire pressure monitors, which is optional, which this bike has and then a service screen. So kind of the same thing as on the bigger GSs and a lot of the BMWs. Now you also have uh, different screens here which are grayed out right now. Nav, media, telephone. If I have my phone connected to be able to see that stuff. And then if we go into settings, you can go in here and configure all your vehicle and system settings. Uh, BMWs are really intuitive and easy to control, so I appreciate that. <laughs> Okay, let's get this thing on the freeway and see how she is at the higher speeds. Quick shifter is pretty smooth on this bike. Okay, well, the main story here is two things, really. Uh, one is revolving around comfort. The bike is incredibly comfortable, and the weather protection is incredible for a bike like this. There's no other mid-size adventure bike that has weather protection at this level. There's almost no wind on my body or on my head. I have the windshield raised up, but even if I lower it down, got a little more wind on my helmet but there's no buffeting and it's still quiet. BMW really knows how to do wind management. They're the best in the business at that. So that's one thing I really appreciate. I mean look down look how much wind protection my legs have too. I mean we're punching along here at almost 80 miles per hour. Also the engine is only revving at 4500 rpm at 76 miles per hour. And since I have the GPS, I can tell you that that speedometer is accurate, which is nice. I'm kind of blown away by how good this is at high speed for a mid-size adventure bike. If you really want, you know, a mid-size adventure bike, not mid-size by weight, I guess, but mid-size by engine size, but you want to go really long distance and you want to travel at higher speeds, this should be probably on the top of your list because you really have to go up to a larger adventure bike uh, like a thousand cc and up to get anything that's really this good out on the open highway so i'm very very impressed uh, with the highway ability of this and of course you've got cruise control which in my opinion is like a necessity i'm super happy with this i would tour i would go across country go across the usa on this bike without any hesitation at all. Okay, let's get this bad boy on some twisty roads here. I was really impressed with the highway performance. Gosh, it's so comfortable. Love the windshield and everything. Everything on this bike is so smooth. It's like, it's almost like everything is like damped. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but 
Anyway, let's just ride and I'll talk about it. So as we get on this twisty road, let me turn my suspension on dynamic mode to firm things up, but it only does the back. And that's one of my complaints about this. I think they should make the front suspension electronically adjustable at this price point. So there's a few things I want to talk about with this bike. Let's talk about the power and the engine. You know what the engine reminds me of? It reminds me of the 2016-2019 Africa Twin 1000. It's got that same like gentle, smooth, quiet, linear power delivery. It's not fast, it's actually pretty slow. I mean, slow is a relative term, slow to a lot of its competitors. It's not slow in an absolute sense, of course, it's still a motorcycle. But at almost 540 pounds and only 90 horsepower, it, it struggles a bit. But it's easy to ride. That's what I really like, and something that's been standing out to me today, all day riding this bike, is how smooth and just, uh, just friendly this whole bike is. The power delivery is smooth, the brakes are smooth, the, the quick shifter is very like soft and gentle, it's easy to use, way better than the big GS. Like that's full power right there. Like you can give this bike full power, and still not get in too much trouble. I'm gonna catch up to the Subaru, but... So the handling, let's talk about the handling. The front forks, the forks are pretty soft, just like a lot of bikes, they're a little bit undersprung. And so you get quite a bit of dive under braking, which can upset things a little bit, but I would say that's about average for uh, an adventure bike like this. The handling is easy, it's uh, very predictable, it's not like too sharp and agile like some bikes, but it um, handles well for a bike with a 21 inch front wheel. A lot better than the old F800 GS, I can tell you that for sure. So, so how are the brakes? The brakes are, uh, they're a little soft, but you have to really get into the lever to get the power. But they're acceptable. They're, they're not as good as a lot of the bikes that I've been riding recently. But they're okay. There's the brakes there. Going back to the engine. So 2500 RPM. If I roll on the engine, it's just so smooth. Like it doesn't vibrate. It doesn't chug. I mean, BMW is just so refined with their stuff. And even if I... Even if I sit here at almost redline, the engine feels smooth and there's almost no vibration coming through the bike. It's really quite something how smooth it is. So anyway, I would give this bike pretty good marks in the twisties. But if you're a power junkie and you like to really accelerate fast, then look at something else because it, 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 it has quite a bit of weight and it doesn't have a lot of power. Okay, let's do some off-roading. Now, since we're here in the dirt, this is a great time to do the drop test. So I went ahead and laid the bike down. And one thing I've noticed is that you see how these engine bars kind of stick out at an angle? Um, it allows the bike to rest on the engine guard here, which I'll try to show. See, here, you can kind of see it. So it's resting on the engine guard there. And it's a nice point that helps you lever the bike up. So the bike may tip over like this, but you can kind of tilt it onto the engine bar and it's gonna help you lift it up. And these things seem to be pretty strong. So I'm really impressed with that design, actually. I like that. Plus this is a great place to mount driving uh, lights or uh, highway pegs, things like that. So let's go ahead and lift her up. Oh. I should have put the bike in gear before I did that. That really wasn't too bad for a 540 pound bike, which is pretty heavy. I think those engine guards really saved the day on that. So pretty good rating for me. I, uh, I would be able to ride this off-road by myself and have the confidence to be able to pick it up. So I think BMW did a pretty good job actually kind of figuring out that part. I like that. 
So let's get on the trail and show you how this thing is off-road. Now, is the bike top heavy? Yeah, it's pretty top heavy, to be honest. I mean, six gallons of fuel up here, and uh, it's a top heavy bike. So I'm in enduro mode, so still got ABS active, although it's less intrusive, and I still have quite a bit of traction control. Since I'm new to this bike, I'm going to try enduro mode first to see how I like it. I can go to enduro pro if I want more, uh, more slip from the rear end. Okay, so I've been riding this bike off-road on and off today before I started filming this, and uh, there's a few things I want to cover. So, it's definitely more manageable and more intuitive and easier to ride, especially in like sand or mud or, so or loose terrain, than its bigger brother, the 1250GS. Some people have said, oh, well, the Boxer GS, because of the lower center of gravity, it's easier to ride. I'm not so sure. I think this feels more natural. Part of that reason is it has a conventional front fork as opposed to tail lever, which if you watch my uh, 1250 GS review, I feel like the tail lever is pretty vague and hard to tell what's going on, where as this bike has a traditional fork, the suspension is pretty soft. You're not going to ride this bike super fast like you could a 890 Rally or something more aggressive. Um, it's like one level down even from my Norden 901 but it's pretty gentle pretty predictable the steering is easy and light it doesn't knife in when you hit like sand um, it's just gentle and and pretty easy to manage I, I like how it handles and for a 540 whew, that's slippery mud for a 540 pound bike I think it actually does really really well and it doesn't really feel like 540 pounds riding it out here. It's uh, I have more fun off-road with this by far than I do riding either like a standard 1200 or 1250 GS and especially more so than the big adventure 1250 like I own. So this just makes me keep thinking about, you know, what's the purpose of taking those huge 1200s off-road when you have choices like this or the competitors to this so like riding through these rocks and stuff the suspension really is pretty soft it soaks up everything really well you just don't want to hit anything really fast so you have electronic suspension on the back so you can fine-tune that and it's also uh, I believe it's an adaptive system or dynamic ESA like the boxer bikes but if that's wrong I'll correct that here in the text but the front fork, whew, the front fork has no adjustments. This trail is getting a little, a little bit interesting here. I haven't been on this in a couple years, and I remember it being a pretty, pretty rough trail. But I really want to give the spike a good workout. And frankly, I need to practice. Haven't been doing this enough lately. But this is a good. This is a good kind of indicator of a trail like you would encounter on a lot of the backcountry discovery routes. A lot of ruts, rocks, mud, sand, snow. Um, you know, it's doable on an adventure bike, but you need to have some experience. The throttle comes on real easy. And I sound like a broken record, but it's just very docile. It's, uh, I like it off-road. It's, it's, it's a nice bike to ride off-road. Okay, I turned off traction control. I'm going to see if I can do like a spin U-turn, which on this top-heavy bike is probably going to end in me dropping over and being embarrassed. But let's see what we got here. Okay, I got it partially around, but then it kind of hooked up. Let's ride up here. Let's see if we can...
oh oh dang it <laughs> see trying to play around with this bike it, it's a big bike it's 540 pounds it's pretty top heavy so good thing you have these good crash bars <sighs> Whew. she's a big girl well that's probably enough off-road tomfoolery we got the bike nice and muddy got to get out here on this trail ride through some snow so uh let's head back to the driveway and uh, start to wrap up the other sections of this video all right so how does the f850 gs stack up to its competitors so the first thing we have to get out of the way and we already discussed this a little bit earlier is the weight of this bike so there's a lot of discussion about how you want to classify adventure bikes in terms of size categories i like to say small medium and large now, if we're looking at, in terms of weight, this bike would be a full-size adventure bike because really it's as heavy as most adventure bikes over a thousand cc's. But keep in mind, this is the adventure trim model that we're talking about. However, if you classify this bike in terms of engine size, it puts it in that mid-size adventure bike category. So this FA50 GS Adventure is a little bit of an interesting and unique motorcycle in that respect. However, at the end of the day, the fact that this bike only has 90 horsepower and weighs almost 540 pounds or 244 kilos puts it at an immediate and major disadvantage compared to a lot of its competitors. Now, people have also criticized the pricing of this bike. Now, I think maybe that's slightly unfair, and here's why. This bike does offer uh, some features that most other mid-size adventure bikes don't offer. For instance, BMW's electronically adjustable suspension, which allows you just by clicking a button on the dashboard to compensate uh, the rear shock preload and damping for adding a luggage, adding a passenger and things like that. So that's a really great feature to have and no other bike sort of within this engine size range uh, has that feature. That being said, with Husqvarna's new Norden coming in at 14 grand US, uh, Triumph Tigers 900 Rally coming in around 16 grand, and other bikes that all sort of undercut this, this bike definitely does come at the very high end of the midsize adventure bike category. The FA50 GS in this adventure trim is a bit of a unique machine, and here's what I mean. This bike has a larger gas tank and more weather protection and more long distance comfort than any of its uh, midsize adventure bike competitors. So you should take a very hard look at this bike if you want something with an engine around this size with around this much power, but it also has the 21 inch front wheel, making it a bit more natural and a bit more maneuverable than some bikes with the 19 inch front wheels. Overall, this is definitely the most long distance touring friendly of all the mid-size adventure bikes. However, the huge, huge problem with what I just said is that let's look at this again. Now, how much does the Africa Twin Adventure Sports cost? That bike, which I've already reviewed at the end of last year, costs about the same as this bike. And for that money, what do you get? Well, first of all, you get a bike that actually weighs 10 pounds less than this, if you can believe that. So even with that much larger, more powerful, and far more torquier 1100cc engine, you also get on that bike a, a really amazing electronic suspension, which works on both the front and rear, unlike on this bike where the electronic suspension only works on the back. You also get, uh, you know, the large fuel tank, you get a lot of standard features, and you get Honda's legendary quality and durability and uh, just sort of overall longevity that Honda is known for. I think in reality, what's going to happen for a lot of people is that this bike's biggest competitor is going to come from within BMW's own portfolio. So if you take a hard look at the pricing and go on BMW's website or go into a dealer, what you're going to find is that a standard R1250GS, if you don't add a bunch of options to it, comes in around $18,000 or so if you can find a base model. That puts it at almost the same price as this motorcycle. Now, what do you get if you step up to that R1250 GS, the non-adventure, as compared to this bike? Well, it's a much different motorcycle, but in my opinion, you're getting a lot more for your money. First of all, you're getting BMW's 1250 shift cam boxer engine, which I have on my own personal GS, and it has a ton of torque, 106 foot-pounds of torque, and a lot of horsepower, 136 horsepower. It'll run circles around this bike, at least on the street. 
you also get a shaft drive. So there's no maintenance on the final drive as compared to the chain on this. You get BMW's telelever front suspension, which has very little brake dive and is very confident inspiring on the street. You also get a bike with that 1250 that frankly has a much higher level of build quality and is also gonna have much better resale value. So ultimately, I suspect that many people walking into the dealership to get like an F850 GS adventure are going to end up driving out of the dealership on an R1250 GS simply because it's so compelling when you actually look at the prices. And frankly, it might be worth even paying a couple grand more to go up to like a more normally option 1250 GS as opposed to this because frankly, your cost of ownership is not going to be any more with the 1250. Your depreciation is going to be less and your running costs are going to be very, very similar. However, don't discount the fact that because this bike uses a traditional fork front suspension and has a larger 21 inch front wheel, that off-road, and I can say this after riding both the 1250 and this 850 back to back, off-road this bike feels more natural and a bit more confidence inspiring than its larger 1250 brother. All right, so let's quickly cover what do I love and what do I hate about the FA50 GS Adventure. So it should be kind of obvious by now, but here's the things that I really love. Number one is the overall comfort and the weather protection is simply incredible on this motorcycle. Another thing I love is the engine has no vibration. It's very, very smooth. It's very easy to ride. And because it has no vibration, it'd be very, very good for long distance touring. I also like the 6.1 gallon fuel tank. I think that's the perfect size for an adventure bike. It's not oversized like the eight gallon tank on the 1250 GSA, but it's also bigger than a lot of its competitors, which offer a five gallon fuel tank, which sometimes can be a little bit too small. I also love BMW's TFT. They have the best TFT in the motorcycle industry, in my opinion, because it has the matte finish on it and not the glossy finish, it doesn't show reflection. So if you have like a bright yellow riding jacket or riding helmet, you don't get reflections and glare from the screen like a lot of other motorcycles. And the control interface with the wheel and how they have everything set up with the buttons is intuitive, easy to use, and it's the best in the business. Couple other things I really like. I really like the standard crash protection. The engine bars do a very good job of uh, protecting the motorcycle from damage when you fall. Uh, although I would say they should have given you a better skid plate uh, for this amount of money. And if the final thing I like is that BMWs come with a three year, 36,000 mile warranty, which is one of the best in the motorcycle business. So what do I hate about the FA50 GSA? Well, the main thing is just how heavy it is compared to the competition. When you combine that with the fact that it also has one of the lowest engine powers of uh, versus all its competitors at only 90 horsepower, this bike is very, very slow. Also, this bike is the most expensive in the class. And another thing I don't like is that the ESA, they should have gone the extra effort to include electronic suspension on the front forks because the Africa Twin 1100 Adventure Sports has that feature and it uses conventional front forks. Final thoughts on BMW's F850 GS Adventure. As we've talked about throughout the video, this model in particular fulfills kind of a unique and somewhat lonely spot in the adventure bike marketplace. It offers the engine power of a mid-size adventure bike and definitely even on the low end in terms of engine power for a mid-size bike, but it offers the weight and the bulk of its heavier duty 1000cc plus adventure bike competitors. However, that's really not the whole story with the F850 GSA. What you are getting with the 850 GSA is the most comfortable bike in its midsize adventure category for long distance touring. You would definitely have to go up to one of its competitors in the full size class above 1000 cc to get this level of weather protection and in some cases this level of features and equipment. But that unique positioning of this bike is exactly what I'm struggling with in terms of trying to recommend this bike versus the competition. If you simply took this bike and measured it and evaluated it in a vacuum without looking at other motorcycles, you would say it's pretty great. And it is true, it is a great motorcycle. However, we have to look at it compared to what you also might buy for a similar price. If you compare it to its competitors in the midsize adventure bike category, the Husky Norden 901, the KTM 890 Adventure, Triumph Tiger 900, and other bikes like that, this bike is a lot more expensive and it's also a lot heavier than those bikes. Now, what if you compare it to the 1000cc plus bikes, the Honda Africa Twin, BMW's own R1250 GS, bikes like that? 
Well, it's almost as expensive as those bikes. It weighs as much as those bikes, and in some case even weighs even more than some of those motorcycles. But it doesn't have the power or the high-end features of a lot of those bikes. So that's why this motorcycle is such a struggle for me to try to understand. I think that if you're shopping for an adventure bike, you should definitely give a hard look at the F850 GS for all the reasons I've talked about. And in particular, this GSA is, would be an extremely good bike for somebody looking for a 21 inch front wheel, a smaller engine, but something that can still carry you thousands and thousands of miles with very, very good long distance comfort. With that being said, you should definitely also take a very, very close look at all the competition because the adventure bike marketplace has gotten really hot in the last few years and there are a lot of competitors that offer lower weight, more features, and more power for less money. Now, BMW does not have a standard F850 GS in its West Coast USA test fleet this year, so unfortunately I may not be able to get to the standard F850 GS to compare to this bike. However, I am getting in the next couple of months the F750 GS, which a lot of people are looking at because it's got a low seat height and it's a lot more affordable, for, so stay tuned for that review. Any questions you have about this bike, any comments you have, please put that in the description below and I will go ahead and address the questions in the comments below. So instead of doing a separate video, I'll just cover them down below in the comments section. So please, anything you have to talk about or questions, just put them down below in the comments. Now, if you found this review useful, if you like my channel, please support what I'm doing and there's ways to support Big Rock Moto in the description below. Other than that, please ride safe and I'll see you out there.